now let's clap for Jesus it's only God we should always celebrate can you celebrate the most high the King of Kings the Lord of Lords the Almighty the one who put breath in your nostrils the one who allows your feet to dance the one who gives you a new song who dancing even in your legs just exalt the king of glory give him a wave offering tell him daddy you are good you are worthy you are mighty glory glory in jesus mighty name we pray my work this morning is a bit simple i'm just here to give you a charge and to prepare you for the person that will be or the persons that will be giving the message for today. And I'm trusting God that as the message or messages will be coming forth, you will identify with your own testimony in the name of Jesus. Father eternal, we thank you. We thank you for this first Sunday in the month of March. Thank you for three is the number of Trinity. Thank you for you have declared that this month you are restoring to us everything that we have lost. It shall be our month of restoration. Lord, we are asking that as your people will testify today, that is a testimony day and a thanksgiving day, there will be reasons for us to receive even our own testimonies too in the name of Jesus. Visit us specially today. Breathe upon every aspect of this service. Let your name be glorified. Thank you, blessed Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. We're going to read together Luke chapter 17, verse 15 to verse 19. I want us to stand and read it together. I'm just going to charge you on giving God thanks with testimonies. Giving God thanks with testimonies. Luke 17, let's go from verse 15. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, We are there not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? There are not found that returned to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith has made thee old. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Please be seated. Like I said earlier, I'm just here to give a charge to prepare you for the messengers that are going to bring the message to you this morning. The Bible says one of them, not two of them, not three of them, not four of them. How many of them? One of them. The Bible says one of them came back when he saw that he was healed and with a loud voice he glorified God. He did the glorifying of God with a loud voice. And then he gave God thanks. And what he came to do was to say, God, thank you. But I want you to please take note only one of them returned. Every other person got a miracle too, but only one person came back. There are different ways by which we can praise God, different ways by which we can give God thanks, different ways by which we can worship God. In Psalm 150, when you read in verse 4 to verse 6, the Bible says, praise him with the timbrel and dance, praise him with stringed instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Let everything that has bread do what? Praise the Lord. You can praise God with your stringed instruments, your own ten fingers. <laughs> you can praise God with a dance. You can praise God even with singing. You can praise God with, with, with instruments. And I believe God today we will praise God with instruments. Can I hear the drums? I said we will praise God with instruments. And we are going to praise God with singing. Can somebody sing to the Lord? We are going to praise God even with dancing. How many of you will do that? Amen. 
Now the Bible makes us to understand when you read in Psalm 150, in verse 1 and 2, it says, praise ye the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Beyond praising God with dancing, beyond praising God with instruments, you can praise God with testimonies. You can open your mouth to say, these are the mighty acts that God has performed. These are the things God has done for us. Now, please take note. Those who return to give thanks are usually one. Out of how many? Out of ten. It means God gets a tight back. <laughs> he gets a tight back. He did ten things, but only ten percent comes back to him. Maybe because he also is asking for tight. And so what we give him back is what? A tight. And so there will be a hundred people in a place, but only ten people will come back to say thank you. There will be a thousand people in a place, but only a hundred will say, I want to share a testimony. And even often time, we don't have enough time to hear the hundred, and so we cut it down. You can imagine you have a gathering of millions, and a tithe of millions will be tens of thousands. We can't hear all of them. They are willing to share, but we say we don't have the time to accommodate them. I pray this morning that you will be one of the same. Now, how are you to praise him? In Psalm 107, the Bible says between verse 1 and 2, it says, speak out and give God thanks with your testimony. He said, oh, give thanks unto the Lord for his good, for his mercy endureth forever. Then in verse 2, he said, let the redeemed of the Lord do what? Say so, whom he had redeemed from the hand of the enemy. I like the way the New Living puts it in that verse 2. He said, as the Lord redeemed you, is there an answer? He said, then do what? Can you tell your neighbors? Oh, look at another neighbor. Say, neighbor, speak out. Now, as God saved you, your answer will be, speak out. As God saved you, as God healed you, as God promoted you, has God lifted you? Yeah. Has God delivered you? Yeah. Did he rescue you? Yeah. Did he provide testimonies to you? Yeah. Did he open your mouth and fill it with good things? Yeah. What will you do? Yeah. He said, tell others he has redeemed you from your enemies. So testimony is all about telling others. One man who was born blind decided to speak out. He gave us an example of how to speak out. The Bible says in John chapter 9, now you read in verse 24 to verse 25 that we are asking this man, the man who you said opened your eyes, is a sinner. We know that the man is a sinner. And this blind man who had been healed, he came and he said in verse 25, whether he be a sinner or no, I know not. One thing I know, whereas I was blind, now, now he didn't speak out for 10 minutes. He didn't speak out for five minutes. That statement he made didn't even last a minute. He said, whether he's a sinner or not, that's your own problem. One thing I know, once I was blind, now I see. And this is the man who healed me. That's all. He spoke out and gave testimony. Now the testimony of this blind man didn't stop there. Even before he said that, when you read in verse 9 to 11, that there are some people who were arguing. It is him. It's not him. It is him. It's not him. It is him. It's not him. Then he came to them and said, I am he. He said to their quarrel, I believe God will give you testimony Amen. that will create an argument. <laughs> that people who knew you before will be saying, no, it's not him. Then they will be considering, no, no, it can't be him. Is it possible? Can anything good come out of Nazareth? How can you say, I don't know, this is too good to be associated with this person. And then you will come, I am he. Can someone say, I am he? I am the one. I am the one. I am the one that you have shown your mercy. <laughs> you have shown your mercy, Lord. I am the only one. I am the only one. <laughs> No, 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 no. I say I'm the only one. Don't, don't, don't forget. Only one returns. 
I say, I'm the one that he has shown mercy. I am the one that you have shown your mercy. You have shown your mercy, Lord. And so this, this blind man said to their quarrel and said, I'm the one. And then in verse 11, they asked him, how, how did your eyes, how did they get open? You can imagine somebody who's been trusting God for fruit of the womb for 18 years. And they see our tummy put to them. How did it happen? Where did you go? What did you do? What did you eat? <laughs> and said, don't worry, I, I can explain. And the Bible said, he answered and said, a man that is called Jesus, he made clay and he anointed my eyes. And he said unto me, go to the pool of Siloam and wash. And I went and washed and I received my sight. Was that up to a minute? But did he share the testimony? I believe there is somebody hearing me. That your testimony also, the whole world will hear it. I said the whole world will hear your testimony. If you are that person, say better amen. Amen. Now, the part I like about this man's story is that um, they asked the parents. <laughs> they were not very sure that this man really was blind before. They saw that he's healed now. He has his sight. So the Bible says in verse 18 to verse 21 that the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of this man that had received the sight. And they asked him, they asked them, say, is this your son who you say was blind? How then doth he now see? I like the way the parents gave the answer. Verse 20. The parents said, uh, we know that is our son. If you see your son, won't you know your son? We know that is our son. <laughs> we know that one. And we also know from birth he was blind. We know those two things. We are sure of that. But then they went on in verse 21. He said, by the means that he is seen, that one we don't know. How his eyes got opened, we don't know. Who opened his eyes, we know not. He is of age. <laughs> he is an adult. And he can speak. He never had speech problem from birth. From birth, one thing is he could talk. The only thing he had a problem with was his eyes. Ask him. I don't know where they are going to argue over your matter. You will be the one to come and say to the quarrel. Your mouth will speak out. Can you say, I will speak out? I will... I will speak out. Now, what is testimony? How do you define testimony? Dictionary says it's the first hand authentication of an occurrence by a witness. What we call, popularly call evidence. Somebody who witnessed something is giving evidence in a law court. Usually they give it under oath. Number two definition is it's an open acknowledgement or a public profession. Of a religious experience what you are simply saying is i experienced something that is not scientifically provable something that you can't explain but i experienced it and i want to let people know i experienced it and the third definition of testimony from dictionary not from bible from dictionary he said the act of testimony the decrees of god the things that god gave moses as the tablets of stone. He said the Bible also calls it testimony. And so, if you want to put all this together, testimony are just eyewitness evidences. Things that someone experienced and is beyond what anybody can imagine. And you say, I need to tell people about this. Testimonies are product of our faith in God. In Hebrews 11, when you read from verse 1 to 5, the Bible says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. 
He said, for by it, the elders obtained what? A good report. He said, through faith, we understand the words that we see today. We are framed by the word of God. So that the things which we see, we are not made of things which do appear. Now pay attention to verse 4 and 5. He said, by faith, Abel offered unto God a more what? Excellent sacrifice. Than who? Than Cain. By which he obtained what? Witness. That he was what? He was righteous. He obtained witness that he was righteous. If you read that verse 4 in the amplified version, that verse 4 in the amplified, he says, he said, by faith, Abel brought God a better and more acceptable sacrifice than Cain, because of which it was what? Testified of it. So anytime you have been a witness of something, you are sharing a testimony. The Bible was saying the offering of Abel gave a testimony about Abel. Can we go back to the King James so that we quickly get this done? He said in verse 4 in the King James, he said, by which he obtained testimony that he was righteous. Witness that he was righteous. God doing what? Testifying of his gifts. And by it, he being dead, yet did what? Speak. Who was testifying of the gift of Abel? God. So God is a testifier. And the Bible went on in verse 5. <laughs> in verse 5, he said, By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had what? That he did what? So for Abel, God was the testifier. For Enoch, God was the testifier. Enoch, please me. Abel, God said his sacrifice was an excellent one. And that sacrifice is testifying about him. God is the best testifier. Because the testimony of men can be embellished. <laughs> and that is why anytime men are asked to give testimony in a law court, they have to swear them under an oath. Because they could exaggerate, they could diminish, they could cut out, they could, and they say, I, I swear by this, or I affirm that the evidence I will give in this law court shall be nothing but the whole truth, and nothing but you won't have court case. The reason why you don't know how to say it is because you don't have court case. I pray for you, you won't have court case. <laughs> Amen. And so, men can embellish their testimonies. And so, the best person to give testimony is who? Is God Almighty. So, their testimonies can be believed. Now, testimonies are meant to build the faith of others who hear them. Anytime testimonies are given, we don't need you to embellish it. We don't need you to pad it up so that you can excite us. The whole essence of testimony is to just make sure that other people's faith rises. They look, they hear your testimony, and they say, wow, if God can do it for her, then God can do it for me. But if somebody shares testimony, and you don't believe it, then that testimony can help you. Hello? Because sometimes it's difficult to believe some testimonies. I, I heard one two days ago. On, during the Holy Ghost service, a family has been married for 20 years. And for 20 years, not once did the wife get pregnant. And when the wife was going to get pregnant, she had three babies at the same time. And you, you begin to ask yourself, somebody who has never, never been pregnant, and the first time she'll be pregnant, three at once, God didn't even start with one. Gave three. The tummy that has not carried one can carry three in old age. Now, sometimes you begin to say, they must have gone somewhere. They didn't tell us the whole story. Now, the moment you start second-guessing testimony, you lose the power of the testimony. It's God talking to somebody. Please understand that there is nothing impossible with God. The Bible says in Luke 1, 45, it says, And blessed is she that believed. Blessed is what? She, she that believed. For there shall be a performance of those things which we are told are ah, from the Lord. Every time I read that scripture, I say, God, you say she that believed. What of he? I am a he. I'm not a she. 
and you are talking to every she that believes that there shall be a performance of the things they have heard because they believe then I found a E too. Mark chapter 9 verse 23 the Bible said Jesus said unto him not her mm -hmm. Jesus said unto him Mark chapter 9 23 Mark you see now is there a she by the, by the sister Mark 9 23 Jesus said unto him if thou can believe, all things are possible to him. Let the he in the house, let them shout amen. amen. The Bible didn't forget us. There is something for men and there is something for women. But the center of it is belief. To she that believes will be a performance. To he that believes, nothing shall be impossible. I believe there is somebody hearing me. All things shall be possible to you. Yeah. All you need to turn impossible to possible is to remove I am. Just remove the I am. And what happens? We become what? Possible. Now giving testimony is a spiritual exercise. And this is the, 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 the nucleus of what my charge is. Giving testimony is what? Is a spiritual exercise. You know, many times when we come to church, we are coming to receive from the man of God who has been in the presence of God, or the woman of God who has been in the presence of God, or the children of God, the choir, who have prepared, rehearsed, and they have been in God's presence, and they are just going to bring down his glory into the house. So everybody is coming to church with this mindset, I'm going to receive. Hello? Did you come to church with that mindset today? Are you going to receive something? But there's something called the believers gathering. When believers gather, we don't gather with the mindset that I am going to receive or I'm going to get. We go with the mindset that I'm going to give to God. Oh my God. Now, what you are giving, I will receive from you. What I am giving, you will receive from me. So we come with the mindset that we are going to give and receive from each other. Does it make sense? In the old days, in the Acts of the Apostles, they didn't usually have somebody who is a pastor who will stay on the pulpit and be preaching to them. Everybody comes with something. And so that's why the Bible says, when you read in 1 Corinthians 14, in verse 26, you see, how is it then, brethren, when you come together, every one of you that has a psalm, that has a doctrine, that has a tongue, that has a revelation, that has an interpretation, he said, let all things be done unto a divine. Now what that scripture is saying is, somebody comes, I read one psalm, it blessed me. I want to share with you. I, I, there's one hymn I heard somewhere. That hymn has been ringing in my heart. I want to sing that song. Hello? That's what the choir just did. And you say, oh, there's somebody say, oh, and you begin to speak in tongues and somebody else is interpreting. What's happening is everybody's bringing something to the table. Have you gone to a law feast? What will you call a law feast in America? Eh? A potluck. And then you, you, you come to a law feast. You know, you, they ask everybody to bring something. Am I correct? And somebody comes with some barbecue. Another person comes with uh, popcorn. Another person comes with fruits. You just bring everything. But then when everybody brings something, it becomes very rich. And then I can enjoy what you have brought. You can enjoy what I have brought. Today, like I told you, I'm not the one preaching. I'm not the one bringing the message. I'm the one giving a charge in preparation for the message. You have the message. You are bringing the message. You are bringing something to God. Am I talking to somebody? And what you are bringing is your testimony. What you are bringing is your what? Your testimony. The Bible says in that 1 Corinthians 14, when you read in verse 31, let's go straight to verse 31. The Bible says, for in this way you give testimony, prophesy, and thus interpret it. I want to read it from the Amplified. Verse 31 from the Amplified. He said, for in this way you can give what? And in parentheses, what did they say testimony is? Prophesy 
and interpreting the divine will and purpose of God. So when a person is giving testimony, he's actually prophesying. Oh my God, they didn't hear that. You, 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 you think testimony time is just to come and tell a story. You think testimony time is just a casual time. No, don't be careless with it, please. Because when you are testifying, you are prophesying. You are speaking into the lives of people. You are talking to people. So I don't want you to come and, 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 and I hate pandemic. And after I take pandemic and, 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 and I took some, 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 some soda. Then after I took some soda. No, no, those things don't prophesy. Am I talking to somebody? You want to share testimony that is doing what? Professor. Because if your testimony is I heard from the DM, people will start eating from the DM everywhere. Am I talking to somebody? They will just go back home and they will be harassing their wife. I want from the DM. I want from the DM. No, no, no. Your testimony is not about what you are eating. Your testimony is about what God has done. He's God talking to somebody. Then the Bible went on. He said, one by one, so that all may be what? Instructed. And all may be what? Stimulated. And all may be what? Encouraged. Three things your testimony is meant to do. Instruct, stimulate, and do what? And encourage. And encourage. I pray this morning or this afternoon that your testimony will prophesy. I say your testimony will prophesy in the name of Jesus. The Bible tells us when we read from the book of Revelations, Revelations 19 in verse 10, Revelations 19, verse 10. The Bible says, And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant. Revelations 19, verse 10. I am thy fellow servant. And of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Let's pause a minute. There are two dimensions of testimony. There are many dimensions. Two dimensions. There can be a testimony of what man has done. And then there can be a testimony of what God has done. Is God talking to somebody? So somebody can come and say, I want to testify to the goodness of God in my life. And I prayed. And I prayed. And I fasted. And after 40 days of fasting, God did the miracle. Now please, who did that person testify about? what man has done you are saying to us what you did as good as what you are saying might be nice but the testimony that prophesies is the testimony of jesus christ beloved the testimony of man does not prophesy they did hear that the bible says the testimony of jesus christ is the spirit of what a prophecy. It means if you come and you testify about what Jesus did in your life, you are prophesying to people. The spirit of prophecy is moving in the atmosphere. The angel of the Lord who was talking to John on the island of Patmos, John was going to worship the angel to bow and say, wow, the revelation you have given me from Revelation chapter 1 to Revelation chapter 19, wow. I need to... And he just said, no, no, don't do it. Don't bow for me. Only God we must worship. Even me, an angel, I'm an ordinary servant like you. Don't bow to me. Bow to God. So testimony is to make people to bow to God, to worship God. If testimony at the end make people to hail you, ha, oh, that man is a fire. You can pray. I didn't know that sister can pray like that too. She prayed that 20 years of barrenness ended. If, if she knew how to pray, how long? Why did it take her 20 years? Why didn't the barrenness end in the first year? So what we are saying is, your testimony should bring glory to who? To God. To God. So the spirit of prophecy testifies about Jesus. doesn't testify about anyone else. And the spirit of testimony is the spirit of truth. When you read in John chapter 16, John 16 in verse 13 to 14, John 16 verse 13 to 14, he said, how be it, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, <laughs> but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he do what? Shall he speak? 
and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. So the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of prophecy. Even the Holy Spirit does not lay claim to what is being done. If you are coming here and you are going to share testimony, and the Holy Spirit is the one that is going to be speaking through you and is going to release into the atmosphere the spirit of prophecy, the Holy Spirit will only glorify Jesus. Are you still in church? Are you still in church? Who will the Holy Spirit glorify? Jesus. Now, testimonies are tools to help us overcome the enemy. The Bible says in Revelation 12, 11, and they overcame him by what? By the blood of the Lamb. And by the word of God, they are testimony. The Bible also tells us that testimonies, they will bring conversion. Oh, you'll be surprised that people who are not believers will suddenly say, I want to be a Christian. I want to be a child of God. Testimony will also bring wisdom to the hearers. Psalm 19, when you read in verse 7, he said, the Lord, the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. I believe there is somebody hearing me this afternoon by the mercy of God. The testimonies you will hear today will touch your life positively. Those testimonies will change you. Those testimonies will make you better. Uh, let, let, me, let me explain something quickly and then I'll get out of the way. If somebody hears testimony of someone who waited to get a blessing, a miracle, and the person waited eight years before the miracle happened, but is here today to testify that the miracle has happened, if there's someone who is in a similar situation, waiting for a miracle, and the person is at the sixth year or seventh year, that person can easily key. I say, if this sister waited eight years and got her miracle, then I'm next on the line. I'm not going to give up. My miracle is knocking. And you see, the, your attitude to the testimony of another person gives you your own testimony. This afternoon, I want to make an altar call. It's a little bit strange, the altar call I'm going to make. I want to make an altar call for only those I want to testify about what God has done. Not what man has done, but what God has done in their life. Now, so if you had been thinking of testifying of what man has done, you have to recalibrate. <laughs> you have to recalibrate. You have to begin to say, how am I going to testify about what God has done? I want only those people I want to invite to come to the altar. And very easy to say what God has done. In one minute you can say it. Once I was blind, now I see. Jesus put mud on my eyes. He anointed my eyes. And he told me to go and wash in the water of Shiloh. I went to wash and I came back. See. And people will glorify God. Sometimes people think that if they talk so much about the problems they've gone through, it will help us to value the testimony. We don't want to value your problem. We want to value the God who solved your problem. Does it make sense? So talk more about God, not about your problem. Talk more about what he has done, not what you suffered. Hello? When you talk more about what you suffered, you are glorifying the one who suffered you. But when you talk more about what he has done, you are glorifying him who took you out of suffering. Don't forget how many people give testimony out of ten? Did that one person come to church today? Come to the altar. I'm inviting only that one person. That has it. Okay, that's the one person. Thank you. The one person who gives testimony of what God has done, come to the altar. One person. It's always one out of ten. Always one out of ten. You, I want you to count. Count the people that come out, they will only be 10% of the people that are here. No, 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 the Bible can't be wrong. The Bible can't be wrong. One out of ten. Some people are warming up. They're warming up. Warming up. They're warming up. They, they are not sure they are part of that one out of ten. 
They are not sure. They are part of that one out of ten. Can, can you give me a bell so that I can ring the bell? Going, 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 going. <laughs> so I can ring the bell to let people know that it, it, one out of ten, one out of ten, one out of ten, what God has done for you. You're not testifying about flesh. You're not testifying about yourself. You're testifying about what God has done for you. I am the one that you have shown your mercy. You have shown your mercy, Lord. I'm the only one. I am the one that you have shown mercy. You have shown your mercy. I'm the only one. I'm going to pray for those who are out here right now. Because I have heard before they say testimony begat testimony. That they say that somebody is testifying, and then someone in the crowd will hear that, ah, and it's then they will remember. Ah, that is true. Me to have that type of testimony, and I'm not talking. Ah, God, I don't want to be an ingrate. Let me come out. No, 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 no. If you didn't come out now, just sit on your seat. Father, I thank you for this, your children. The one out of ten that you have brought out. And they are here not to testify about man, but to testify about Jesus, about God who gave them this testimony. Lord, we are asking that as they share their testimony, release upon this audience the spirit of prophecy. Let their prophecy bring healings, bring deliverances, bring promotions, bring bring liftings that are beyond human imaginations in the name of Jesus. Thank you blessed Lord. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus mighty name we pray. So what you're going to do you will face the audience. I'm going to call Pastor Yemi right now and he's going to coordinate this session and you're just going to say what God did for you. <laughs> what God did for you and don't take more than a minute once i was blind now i see god bless you let somebody shout hallelujah now we want to set the ball rolling the bible says the doers of the word are not what hear us alone 